Good morning, good morning, good morning, and good morning, good morning, good morning. So I gotta tell you, this whole global warming thing, hey Brian, um, I know they're saying that this year was the hottest on record, which by the way, I don't know how you can actually say this year is the hottest on record ever in the entire history of the globe. And to their credit, I don't think they're saying this is the hottest year on record for the entire history of the globe, which actually is the counterpoint, right? So if you're saying there was a hotter year on history on the globe, and it was prior, and if the solution to bringing that temperature down wasn't what you're proposing, then can't it be said that what you're proposing isn't the solution? Um, you can't say that because they don't keep, yeah, exactly. Um, so to that point, this may sound like an insensitive comment, if not for that preamble. Um, I like decent weather in December. I was outside jogging. I didn't even bring a sweater. Like I had my hoodie, but I didn't have the sweater above it. Right now my windows are closed and I have the heat on because my fingers are cold and I can't exactly type with cold fingers, which is quite annoying. You know, you. You, you try to do something on your phone or you try to type or something and your fingers are freezing and you can't move them. So uh, although we do like the temperature, uh, the windows are closed and heat is on. So that's just a little bit of a little uh, 60 seconds of silliness to start the conversation while everyone attends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so let's catch up on some stuff. <sighs> so Ted, hey Andy. Um, so Ted's code has been upgraded. Um, we spent, so I was able to bring the, the coding, right? So from 9,800 words down to 8,200. And what that means is that Ted will be moving quicker, right? Because there's less latency period. On top of that, we were able to move Ted from the regular network of ChatGPT to their turbo network, which is going to continue decreasing the latency. On top of that, we've removed Microsoft Azure. Hey, Frida. Therefore, we removed one of the components that, um, you know, the, the, uh, the prompt or the, whatever, the prompt, the message goes from one to two to three. Now we remove that, so it just goes directly one to two. So all of these moves were designed to decrease the latency period because the next step for Ted is to turn them into Jarvis. And for those that don't know who Jarvis is, if you watch Iron Man, it's kind of like um, if you know Alexa or Siri, like from Amazon and, and, and uh, Apple, Jarvis is that, but just like throughout the whole house, which those are as well, but it does things. So Alexa and Siri, you know, they do what you, I'm not sure that they actually take actions. I think they answer questions. I think for, I know Alexa could read your text messages if you link your phone up to it. Um, I believe it can tell you that you have new emails and I think it can maybe even read them for you. I don't know this to be true, but I imagine it to be true that if you wanted, let's say you put something on your wish list on Amazon and connected your Amazon account to Alexa, which is owned by Amazon, obviously and said, hey, listen, um, I'd like to purchase that thing on my Amazon with the card on file sent to the address on file. I don't know if it does that, but it would behoove, like, I don't know why it wouldn't, right? Like that makes sense to me. Um, what Ted is going to be able to do, it far exceeds that. It's going to be connected to everything. Um, but the step before that is to get it to be able to speak fluently. So right now you can send audio messages and you hold the button, send the audio message, then Ted responds to it, sends it back. You press the button to listen to the audio message. And, you know, this is what it looks like when being built. But once it is built, then you put all the components together, in which case, hey, Ted, and then you just talk to it. Now the whole hey, Ted is not, um, is not an oversight. I'm not just kind of like overly simplifying it. It's called ASR, um, Audio Speech Recognition, I think. So that's what Alexa and Siri have. It's, they have wake words. 
So if you say, hey, SIRI, and I'm only doing that because I have it, because so, I'm using an Apple, that's its wake word. And then it wakes up and says, yeah, I'm here, what's up? Same thing with Alexa, hey, Alexa, oh, I don't have Alexa, hey, Alexa, oh, hey, what's up? Meaning, we already have that technology for Ted. Now, it's not in your Ted yet, but we have it, where we can say, hey, Ted, and it wakes. Now, we haven't instituted it yet because Ted is living on WhatsApp, which means you have to make the coding congruent with WhatsApp to allow the microphone, while then having Apple allowing my, uh, WhatsApp to have microphone access when the phone's off. So there is things, right? Like there's integrations that need to happen. Now, ideally, how that works is that you just build your own hardware. That's why Alexa is so, you could say whatever you want. It's an Amazon product. You don't need permission from Apple or anyone else to do it. And same thing with SIRI. And I'm, again, I'm not saying it because I'm on an Apple product. They don't need permission from themselves, right? Like they could do what they want to do. So ultimately, that will be a goal. I don't know if it's going to be the final goal. But again, in our patent, we have holographic 3D real-time image generation. Therefore, the goal really is to create an actual hardware product. So this ASR will be totally fine. And it will project an image, like a 3D hol holographic image that you can actually engage with. In fact, the next step would be to project five of them, 10 of them. Could you conceive being in a room where there's actually 10 different beings that look absolutely real that you're able to talk to individually and get exactly what you want? Oh, there's my doctor, there's my this, there's my that. Okay, Dr. Ted, I need you. Boop, there I am. Hi, I'm here. Now, all of these things sound far out. And I get it. They are far out. But the only way you get to the far out is having the patent to secure that you're the only one that can do it. And when you have the patent to secure that you're the only one that can do it, then that whole far out thing, you don't actually do yourself. You get the patents, you create the use cases, and you talk to the people that are able to have, that, are, that have the resources to do it financially and labor-wise, has the technology to do it, and you make the deal with them. Hey, listen, this is the use case that we believe um, is five years out, but with your resources, it could be one year out. In fact, you'd be the first one to do it on market. We would offer you that exclusiveness. This is the deal we're willing to make with you, and we'll reevaluate it in three years. Is this something you'd be interested in? I promise if you say that to like a thousand different companies, somebody will say yes, right? And that's all based on is what you're doing cool enough? To that point, I actually emailed our patent team today to add to our patent. Um, like I have been citing, the next form of marketing, this is the environment, like we're creating the context of it, right? So instead of social media marketing, where you go on and you're getting ads based on your clicks and, you know, whatever, it would be that you have your AI companion that obviously knows you well enough. It's your exact replica duplicate of you. Its only job is to please you. It's accountable only to you. Therefore, it is the other side of you and Basically, when your AI recommends something to you, it's essentially you recommending it to yourself, but you don't know that you want it yet because you don't know the whole world of commerce. The only way you know what commerce is is when you get targeted ads to you. But if your AI knew everything over there, knew everything about you, put them together, calculated, would say, oh, this would be great for you. Do you like it? We believe that that the ceiling for that is much higher than social media marketing ever could be. In fact, social media marketing, by all intensive of purposes has reached its ceiling. I don't think it could get any better. In fact, with data control, privacy laws, and just the overall sense of big tech, I believe they got as large as they can get. So I think social media marketing, although probably still good, you know, um, we think is the peak is behind. Meaning the next thing is being created as we speak. And we think that we're the ones that are actually leading that. Now, unfortunately, leading an invention does not mean that you're profitable. It doesn't even mean that you have money. In fact, every amazing inventor ever in the history of the world pretty much died poor. Now, let me say we're not expecting that, right? Like that's not the base case. <laughs> but the point being from the idea generation to the fulfillment and execution and creation of it, that's a really, really difficult like everyone hates you time. 
that's a really difficult people lose faith. That's a really difficult, you get these phone calls. That's a very, it, it's just, it's not a fun period of time. And it's a matter of what's your prerogative. Do you believe that the best way to get through this, the best way to get to it is through it? Or do you believe the best way to get to an outcome you want is saying, okay, this was a bit much. Let me turn around and start selling shirts, right? So that's a little bit of a commentary on what that process looks like. Now, what we, oh, so, okay, so that was the point. So that is the contextual of what we believe the new marketing will look like. Because we don't believe there is an, there is an intelligent case. Like, I don't think anyone can make the case to me, hey, Ant, the technology of AI will never, ever, either A, get to, or B, be accepted as, somebody's companion that people are genetically coded that they will always know that's a computer and they will never ever speak to it in the way that they would another person therefore your 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 thesis statement that this ai has the ability to learn that individual is flawed i don't believe that case i don't think that case is reasonable, nor do I think that case could be made to me. Now, of course, I'm one person. If I can tell you how many times I've been wrong in my life, we'd be here for a long time, right? But to operate under the presumption that I'm wrong, that's actually menti mentally like concerning. That's certifiably cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, right? Like to operate under the assumption you're wrong, I think actually is the definition of mental uh, unhealth or whatever the word is, right? Mental concern. So I operate under the assumption that I'm correct and I operate by making my own assumptions. Therefore, one plus two equals one plus two equals three. Okay, just making sure the math works out. So that's where we're at with believing that thesis statement. Take that to its logical next point though, right? So what we're talking about is that so in the coding of TED and in the patent, there is a very complex intent scoring out. You know what? Let me see something. But let's consider the expression, I want pizza. User personality type. Let's say we have identified this user as, a, as being decisive and expressing their desire explicitly. We would assign a high probability here because the directness aligns with the personality type, thus making the statement more likely to be true. Probability, 0.9. Past user behavior. Based on past user behavior patterns, let's use let's say the user often discuss food, especially pizza, increasing the likelihood that they want pizza, probability 0.8. Specificity of the expressed need. The user says, I want pizza, which is a clear and specific need. So the probability that they want pizza is high, probability 0.95. User relationship with you. If you share a strong bond with the user where the user frequently engages with you and follows your recommendations, this would increase the likelihood that the expressed need is genuine. Probability 8.5. Current context. If the time of the statement is around a usual meal time for the user or during a food related discussion, the stated needs credibility increases. Let's assume it's dinner time, increasing the probability 0.9. Sentiment analysis. Through sentiment analysis of the sentence, I want pizza, we can deduce that the user's sentiment is positive. We would assign a high probability because the sentiment aligned with the desire, probability 0.9. After assigning these probabilities, we'd calculate the intermediate intent score for each variable, specific probability weighted multiplied by the variable value, sum these scores, and then normalize the result to fit in the one, <clears throat> the zero to 100 range to represent it as a percentage. This now becomes a preliminary intent score, which further gets refined to level two, level three stages to calculate the final intent score. Now you go through the level two analysis. Now we're talking about user personality, moods, behavioral analysis. Then you get to level three, identifying latent desires. Using Freudian principles, recommend, recognize that the user might have a latent desire they don't express directly. If you can associate indirect cues to a desire for pizza, i.e. the user often mentions Italian food, you may predict a higher intent for pizza. Shared experiences in the collective unconscious. Using Hungar Jung Carl Jung, Jungarian principles, spot cues that tap into the shared human experience of archetypes. For instance, a user discussing a fun family pizza night could be indicative of their positive association with pizzas. Now we go to level four. 
advanced reasoning and meta learning. Counterfactual reasoning, improve the understanding of the user's behavior by considering not just the actions taken by the user, but also the potential reasons behind actions not taken. Meta learning, implement continued learning and improvement of the learning algorithm itself based on all previous feedback and adjustments. So you identify the variables, start giving them all of these scores. There's a really, really very complex algorithm in there. So complex that we don't have it as just, you know, A equals B times A. Blah, blah, blah. Because it's a conversational model, we build the algorithm in conversational terms because our AI is able to act like, for instance, when you say use Freudian analysis to do this, we don't need to now define what Freudian analysis is because our AI is able to access that part of its knowledge base, then consume it and use it to define that sentence. So when you see that, like maybe two or three or four pages of just algorithm written out conversationally, all the keywords in it are actually, you know, books and errors and generations of context that then get used to make that decision. So actually, I want to show you one more thing. Right, your patent team extend warm greetings to you as continue collaborate, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> so to facilitate a cogent understanding of these functionalities, let's envision a world wherein each user and their AI companion, Ted, share a bond unfettered by time or space that is based on frequency of usage, duration of association, unlimited reservoir trust. This ideal interplay of parameters culminates in Ted achieving a high degree of precision in predicting user intent, a feature ingrained within our provisional patent and transcends <clears throat> into autonomous action in line with the user's intent. In operation terms, such preemptive actions hinge on Ted's attaining an intent score of 9.5 or 95% accuracy in predicting user intent 95% of the time of a rolling 90 day period. The intent score is segmented by different factors such as context, the key determined in influencing users' performance, preferences, and predicted actions. Utilizing illust illustrious examples, consider Ted comprehending user inclination toward a specific food choice on a rainy day. When such a context, rainy day plus time of day plus user behavior manifests itself, Ted autonomously orders the predicted food choices for the user providing it has achieved the aforementioned high intent score specific to a context over the preceding 90 day period. Should the user express dissatisfaction with Ted's autonomous choice, the expense is covered by Ted and the incident is noted as discrepancy in the algorithm's performance. This initiates the creation of a data set for autonomous selections accepted and rejected by the user, acting as the guiding principles and future autonomous decisions by Ted. Although the premise of the intent algorithm is crucial in predicting user acceptance of Ted's suggestions, it merely serves as an input to this evolved independent decision-making algorithm grounded in the actual user response to Ted's autonomous actions. As the framework scales, an actu actorial model underpins both the intent and independent decision-making algorithms performance assessment. Given that Ted would incur the course of the decisions not favored by the user, achieving the break-even line encapsulates Ted's fundamental role of being the user's best friend and confidant. Through this patent, we aim to encapsulate human artificial intelligence interaction based on measures of individual intent leading to autonomous actions that garner high user acceptance. Continuous improvement will be realized by factoring in data from declined recommendations and un consummated actions, which presents feasible insights for enhancing the accuracy of Ted's actions. Ted's ambitious roadmap includes storage, ser, uh, storing, secu storing secure users' financial data, and in some instances, autonomous access to that data. User financial security is achievable via Ted-specific dedicated bank accounts, hence mitigating outsized financial risk or by integrating all of the user's accounts, including social media, email, text message, thereby paving the path for a more holistic decision-making by Ted. As we venture together into this futuristic journey, our non-provisional patent aims to bolster and protect our mission from the start. The successful prediction of user intent in 95% of the causes and user acceptance of autonomous decisions at a similar rate. We anticipate your insights and value contributions as we navigate this path of harnessing artificial intelligence in a manner that benefits users and safeguards their interests while sustaining our forward-looking vision for TED. I hit 95% accuracy 95% of the time over a rolling 90-day period. And it's broken down into niches, right? Like so food service or dating or whatever. When TED accomplishes that feat, then it starts acting autonomous, of course, with user permission, in which case 
if Ted believes 95% of the time, he's right 95% of the time and has the data to prove over this rolling period, that is the case. Well, then instead of asking the user, hey, it's going to be rainy tonight. And whenever it's rainy, you always order the Kung Pao chicken. Does Ted have the ability and the bank account to access and the access outside to order the chicken and have it to you at 8 p.m. where your door knocks or Ted texts you and says, hey, by the way, you have dinner coming in 15 minutes, just letting you know you got it. Do you say thank you or do you say, whoa, 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 this is too much. Like you went into my bank account and did that? Like, I'm not okay with this. Well, that answer is a part of an indoctrination process of 95%, 95%. And the fact that if you said, you know what? I didn't want this. I didn't want Chinese tonight. In fact, I was thinking about pizza. You got it wrong, Ted. Okay, Ted will pay for it. You got the Chinese food. But Aunt, what if people just do that all the time? No, 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 Ted's gonna take note that you turned it down. Because if now you're turning down things that got sent over, Ted's gonna recommend a whole lot less things because Ted's not looking to go bankrupt on you. Therefore, if the person has that genuine interaction and in the person, if the person actually values what is happening, then Ted actually does become what we're describing. And at that point, the tentacles are far outreaching. Banking, commerce, data, it doesn't matter. That's what the patent is. Now the conversation then becomes, well, and the things you're talking about are like 10 years from now, right? I don't think anyone's going to allow some artificial intelligence to know them well enough to have access to all their bank accounts. Can you even imagine how hackable, blah, 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 blah. I'm with you. I have no idea. I have no clue how hackable that is. Zero, absolutely zero. But I can tell you that technology will get to a point that it will solve that. And I can tell you, if you can say that sentence, that technology will solve it, then the patent is worth what it's worth, irregardless if it's functional two years from now, five years, 10 years from now. It doesn't matter. The patent's the patent. Therefore, the companies that you partner with are in charge of that. So if you partner with OpenAI on a bigger thing, if you partner with Grok and Elon over at Twitter, if you partner with Anthropic and Jeff over at Bay, like if you partner with Llama and Mark over at Facebook, it doesn't matter. Their AI is the one that's taking care of that risk. It's the patent that actually has the money though. So it's, it's almost like when everyone is doing a gold rush and uh, using shovels, you're the one with the wheelbarrow, right? Like. Like everyone has a shovel and they're digging, but they need a wheelbarrow. Or I think I got the analogy wrong. When everyone's digging for gold, you're the one selling them the shovels and the wheelbarrow for that. So that is what that is. Now, again, we already have the provisional. Um, Ted text to use it, make sure that they're okay. Yeah, so Brian, um, there is a process to it. Um, so there's going to be plenty of things along the way that Ted's going to X the user's input. Um, what you didn't see is every time that Ted makes a recommendation, this is in the infancy, and the user says no, Ted will say, well, do you mind if I ask why, why'd you say no? So I could learn not to do that again. And all of that gets embedded, which means the text gets converted to numbers, and those numbers then calculate to equal predictions going forward. I know. Um, so that's what goes on in my head all day, <laughs> just in case you're wondering. Um, but yeah, so that's moving. Take the trader's money is, I'm actually really excited about it. So now the trader's getting his butt whooped this week because apparently the market just wants to go up to like a bazillion every single day and that's fine. Um, but our Twitter marketing that we did Sunday and Monday, I laughed about yesterday because we had such poor results but we had the best results, but the poor conversions. Like we had 12 and a half thousand clicks to our lander page and converted like less than 0. 0.000. In fact, our click through rate on the ad was 34%. In fact, our cost per click was 0. 0.03 cents. You do not get better metrics than that. Meaning everything we did was perfect up until the person actually got on the page. Well, Ann, that's not good. Well, anybody will tell you what's difficult is traffic what's not difficult is conversions if you can tell me you could bring twelve thousand people to my store today i'll figure the rest out so i've already identified some solutions and we're going to be instituting them today we're going to start that twitter marketing again tonight we want it to be a whole weekend thing so that we could 
really um, populate, take the trader's money next week. Um, so that's exciting and that's what we'll be doing starting today. So I'll be working on that all day. Um, Ted, I'll check in with my team at some point. I mean, I spoke to him yesterday and I'm on a call with them tomorrow. So I think they're just kind of where they're supposed to be. Um, Rhino Bucks will buy it when we get off the call. I actually didn't even really send any money yet because I woke up at four o'clock today and you would not believe how late my day is. In fact, I was still wearing the shirt from yesterday because that's my knock, like whatever I wear the day before is my knock around clothes for when I go jogging the next day. I was about to get on camera with it and I'm like, you know what? Let me not look like, like I'm homeless, right? Um, I almost took this call while jogging because I was just that far behind today. So as silly as it sounds, waking up at 4 a.m., my day's already shot. Tomorrow I have court, so I'm going to be unavailable. Um, it's funny, everyone I talk to is like, Aunt, you have court every week, because then I have court again Tuesday. I go, well, I'm the really blessed individual that, um, and I'm not allowed to say certain things. Like I'm legally not allowed to even say things. I'm out of here and I'll see you all Monday. Bye.